going to add, ensure an adequate transmission now, of the tradition. Now, who is the book for, exactly? Who did you write it for? That's a great question. I actually, my publisher is Oxford Press, and um, they actually gave me a long lead time to write this book, for which I was very grateful. Um, and in the process of writing the book, I actually um, obtained a master's degree in Jewish studies while I was writing the book. So it took me a long time to mm -hmm. write. But I wanted a book that would educate Jews and non-Jews. I wrote this book for knowledgeable Jewish people who are learned, as well as for Jews who really know virtually nothing about the tradition. And I was really careful to explain all my terminology. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I wanted it to be something that would be available to a wide range of Jews, educated and not, as well as to non-Jews who are interested in cultural studies and cultural studies methodology. Yeah, that's so it was interesting. And parts of the book, um, you know, when it talked about, we, you know, you had a, a section on intermarriage, and then there was the Pew report stating that there's a lot of intermarriage going on. And, um, and, I, and, and I was thinking about it, and I, I think the first thing that came to my my mind was why, what has happened? Why are people running away from their religion and marrying people outside of the religion? Is it because we're more of an integrated society? People are meeting different people at colleges, at workplaces. Uh, years ago, the temples and synagogues used to have dances every weekend, and people would meet people of their own faith in these dances. And I, somebody asked me, where are the dances? I said, there aren't any Well, anymore. the dances have been replaced by things like J-Swipe and JJ, but J-Swipe <laughs> in particular. Like, the younger generation but, has its own ways But you know, it's interesting. A lot of that. people that aren't Jewish go on J-Date to meet Jewish people, people. Right, right. and so it's not the same anymore. And what what is going on? And this this is part of your book, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting. And we'll go to a few other sections of the book. Um, why are people getting married outside of the religion? What's happening in the home? What's happening in Judas, Judaism that uh, people are don't seem to care anymore? Uh, they feel everything's the same. Why not? Okay. So that's, that's the $64 million question that all the Jewish sociolo the sociologists of the Jewish community, particularly in the United States, um, are, are seeking to, to grapple with. Because if we can understand the phenomenon, we can also understand how to address the phenomenon, again, with the greater goal being the perpetuation of the Jewish tradition. So I think the starting point is that you know, if you raise your kids within a more uh, you know, a, a truly orthodox community, um, whereby the, the children are in day school from their very earliest mm -hmm. of years, preschool. Um, preschool, moving on up through um, high school, whereby the, your life as a family, as a family, revolves around Judaism. Judaism is the number one priority, bar none. Um, you've got a much better shot of your kids of your kids marrying Jewish, unless of course they rebel, which mm -hmm. you know is sometimes the case. But if you're raising your kids in an environment that is representative of, you know, 85% of, of American Jews, whereby, um, you know, your, your, your Judaism is important to you, but it's not the only thing that you're concerned about as a parent. You know, there's a, you have a multitude of, of, of messages that you want your, your kid and values that you want your kids to absorb, although Judaism being one that's very important. You got to work really hard, really, really hard to get the message out there that, Judaism is important, the tradition is important, perpetuation is important. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of accountability on the part of the parent. Because I, I notice that a lot of children get bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah and after the bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, the parents, everybody stops going to synagogue. Right. It's like, that's it. They get, they become 13 and girls can be 12, you know, 12 and a half. Boys have to be 13. And that's it. And I've seen it happen in my own family where, um, you know, during their bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, and they make pledges and they say, I want to continue on my Judaism and I'm going to be active. And then, boom, it falls apart. Right. What's happening? Right. And I, and I think, again, what's happening is part of it is a little ch bit of ch teenage rebellion. Okay, I went through that with, with some of my kids. Um, part of it is, is, is parent accountability. And part of it, too, I think has to also do with the socialization of the kids. So I'm, if your kids are in public school, 
they're going to have friends from a wide variety of backgrounds. Not that that's a bad thing, mm -hmm. but you have to, as a parent, make sure your kids have an opportunity to have sufficient Jewish socialization and to make your children understand that that's, that's really important. Um, but it's a balance because, as you know, as a parent, as a parent, you can you can make sure your kids understand your values, but you have to sort of know when to push and when not to push. And that's something that parents who are thoughtful mm -hmm. about their parenting um, and who also are really um, really embrace Jewish tradition and and want their children to embrace it. It's it's a you're you're walking a very very fine line. Having said that. I think there's also a little bit of accountability on the Jewish institutions um, to try to design programming that is going to attract and embrace um, Jewish youth. And, and there's another part um, of the issue um, as well, because you know the, the millennials and even the generation below the millennials, I don't know if they have a name yet, truthfully. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, they, they're, they're weaned in, in, a, in an era of pure customization, internet technology, um, they don't step march to the same beat um, that the baby boomers and, and those who are, came before the baby boomers did. And they have um, what's, what sociologists call, you know, young Jews have a, um, a multi-layered identity. Their Judaism can be important to them, but it's not the only thing that's important to them. Again, particularly when you're talking about Jews that are reared outside of an orthodox environment. So it's up to the parents to ensure accountability right. and the institutions. I think we talked about it today that most parents want to be their kids' friends rather than being their child's parent. And that's really important because, you know, I feel that, and I know in, when I was a parent, I, I am still a parent, but when my kids were younger, I was never their, I, I never proposed to be their friend. I mean, I want them to love me, but not to be their friend. I'm their parent. And too many parents these days, they want to be their children, children's friend. And the, ch the kids say, no, I want to go to Saturday. What's on Saturday? All the games, right? It's the basketball games, the, ba the football games in school. The school, so the kids don't go to synagogue on yeah. Saturday. And when that, that's the argument that, that Jewish day schools, be they orthodox, conservative, or even reform, use for why you send your kids to a Jewish day school, because you don't have that, that conflict. But most kids don't go to Jewish day school. That's the reality, right. and they're not going to. It's expensive, for, for one thing. And so again, it, it's a delicate balance. The other thing that, that I would like to also emphasize, though, is you know not all intermarriage is the same you know you can have situations where there is intermarriage but the couple has been counseled by a rabbi and it would be most likely a reform rabbi these days mm -hmm. um, in terms of up the upbringing of the ten I think children. I think that I think we li I like to talk about that because mm -hmm. it's it's interesting because if you're married to somebody that's not a Jew and they're Christian, you could still incorporate Judaism in the family so they all can understand it and be together and be part of it. Absolutely. Um, the, the reality is, okay, just like all, in, all intermarried couples, there's a, just like there's a diversity of uh, cultural Jews on a spectrum, mm -hmm. or, or Jews even within each particular denomination, mm -hmm. there's also a spectrum of Jews that intermarry. And so some Jews that intermarry, it's just not important at all to the Jewish partner, and therefore I've heard so many stories, I'm sure you have too, where it's the non-Jewish partner who actually takes more responsibility than the Jewish partner. You have that variation. Yes, that, that's true. But where there is intermarriage, and it is important to the Jewish partner, they just happen to fall in love with someone who isn't Jewish, you can, I, I believe, th there's, there's many ways that that couple can build a, a sound foundation for a strong Jewish home. Um, those are the easy cases almost to, to look at. The harder cases, and probably the ones that are more prevalent, is where the kids are raised both. Um, and people don't understand why that's not possible. I, I think there's some well, good reasons why they're raised with Hanukkah, they're raised with right. Christmas. I have a cousin that uh, I, should, I mentioned earlier that um, they had a Moyo, a um, rabbi that came and did the circumcision in the house when he was a baby, and then a couple weeks later he was baptized. Exactly. So exactly. it was. It, 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 that could be a little confusing. Well, it's confusing, and it also it also if you if the if the ultimate goal is transmission of the Jewish tradition, that type of scenario is not likely to end up in so are, you, so are you saying that you can't incorporate both religions? I, you know, I, I'm going to say this. I, I think when you're in a situation where it is an intermar interfaith marriage and you try to bring the kids up as both, 
um, are the chances going to be strong that the offspring of that marriage is going to necessarily want to marry Jewish, want to bring their kids up Jewish, want to build a Jewish home. I, I, I think that's a harder challenge. Don't forget, in the United States, Jews are a cultural and a religious minority. And so we're not the majority culture. Um, it's harder. It's harder to be Jewish um, in America, you know, for exactly for that reason. And so the statistics show that while the offspring, and there are statistics to prove this, while the offspring of intermarried couples may tend to identify as Jewish, okay, they identify not religiously as Jewish, all right? And so even more so in a home where it's, they've been exposed to both religions, mm -hmm. the chances of them wanting to be engaged, identified Jews are, are probably and not And also, high. like in the reform, if the father is Jewish and the mother isn't Jewish, uh, they say in reform, the child is also Jewish. But in Orthodox, it says that if a mother is, if the father is Jewish and the mother isn't, then the child isn't Jewish and, they need, and the child and the mother have to be converted. It's not Orthodox, it, it's Jewish law. Okay, Jewish okay law so we're is, back to law right, now. Jewish law okay, says okay. that the mother has to be Jewish for the child to be Jewish or the children have to be converted um, now, halakhically. Now, converted. reform doesn't follow reform, that tradition? No, reform, so reform actually changed their position, as you noted. Okay. But it's not just that it, the father is Jewish and the mother is not, the child is Jewish. The child has to be brought up uh, in a home that basically has Jewish content to it. So there was a case actually that came up in a reform synagogue where a father, it was a mother, father, and two kids, a boy and a girl. The boy was being raised Jewish, the girl was being raised Catholic. And so they wanted to apply for membership uh, in the synagogue so that the boy could have a bar mitzvah. And that was not necessarily considered to be satisfying the reform criteria because they were raising two kids of two different faiths. It wasn't really a Jewish home. You know, I, I don't want to get into the, right. the, the details are, of the reform, but, but, but these are the problems that come up. And that's what this book is all about. It's about the laws, things that we're mentioning now that were, you know, that um, like even uh, in homosexuality, in the Bible says that a man should not lie with another man. Um, I mean, these are things that, uh, and, and, that and, and that has to be reexamined too because, you know, nowadays there's a lot of people that, you know, that have, they're homosexual and they definitely want to belong to the Jewish religion and they don't want to feel ostracized from their religion as well. So all of these things that you have, you have incorporated in this book, which is really interesting because um, I am finding out things that I never knew before mm -hmm. and being, you know, from the Jewish faith. And I think this book will help people really understand what, you know, I, I see our time is getting more limited, but um, to help people understand what these things are all about. And there's laws. There's actual laws that govern all these situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you want to say anything else about your book that we have a little bit of time left? Well, I, I, I guess the, the, what I, the thought that I would like to, to leave your viewers with is that Judaism is so much more of a complex tradition than most people realize. But it is a beautiful tradition. Um, and that's why the preservation of a meaningful Jewish tradition is something that I am completely passionate about. Um, and that was another reason I wrote this book, because I wanted to share my passion about the Jewish tradition and the perpetuation of the Jewish tradition, because there are things in our tradition that we gave the world. And so therefore, we as a people have to be able to continue to draw from our tradition so that we can explain the beauty for ourselves and for, and for others. Yes, and I think that's really important. I guess you were raised, you were raised by parents that were both conservative or orthodox? My dad was actually orthodox. Uh, he was raised in an orthodox home, and it was really important to him that um, his daughter, as I explained to you right. before, have a Jewish education. Um, so we, we actually joined a conservative um, synagogue, but he told me about his mother all the time, and I was named after her, so I've always felt a, a special connection. And also in the book, it addresses, um, uh, as I'm wrapping up right now, it, it also you know talks about the reform, con reform conservative, traditional, Orthodox and all the other, there's a lot of other, you know.